begin. Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, in this video we're going to be tackling challenge quiz level 2 on brilliant.org. Let's dive right into these problems. Alright, calculate 9 cotangent squared of 60 plus secant squared of 45 minus 4 sine of 90 all divided by 3 tangent squared of 30 plus cosecant squared of 45 minus tangent of 45. All Alrighty, what a problem to get started with. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some white space real fast because we are going to need it. Let us fill fill in this rectangle. Get my fill tool. All right. Here we go. First, let's well, let's let's draw our unit circle. We have our unit circle here, and we can refer to it whenever we need some guidance. First of all, what is cotangent? This is something you have to know to solve this problem. Cotangent is just 1 over tangent and so instead of sine over cosine it's going to be cosine over sine secant is 1 over cosine and cosecant is 1 over sine all right so now let us let's start simplifying. I see let's let's do the easy ones first. I see 90 degrees here. 4 sine of 90. So what value is that going to be? Well, remember that for our unit circle, our points are always in cosine comma sine. So our sine is our y position. Our y position at this point is 1. So this is going to be minus 4 sine and 90 is minus 4 times 1. So this is just going to be minus 4. All right. Now we have a bunch of 45. So let's tackle these 45 degrees. We have, so 45 degrees, let, let's change color. this is what 45 would look like and then at this point the value is root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2 sine and cosine are identical here and so secant squared of 45 if we square the term we're just going to have 2 over 4 which will be 1 half. So secant squared of 45 is going to be, well, let's back up for a second. So secant again is 1 over cosine. And so this is going to be 1 over root 2 over 2. So let's just flip it. So 1 over cosine in this case is going to be 2 over root 2. And then it's squared, so let's square the term. So we're left with 4 over 2, which equals 2. So secant squared of 45 is going to be 2. What about cosecant squared? Well, it, it's going to have to be the same thing. So this will also be 2. And let's think of tangent 45. Well, we have root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2 so for tangent tangent of 45 is going to have to be 1 as again we have root 2 over 2 and it's going to be over root 2 over 2 so this must tangent of 45 must be 1 all right and lastly we have 9 cotangent squared of 60. So let's think of our 60. Let's get this bubblegum pink out. 
60 degrees falls about right here. Let me, uh, excuse me, and let me write the coordinates a little bit below. I'm kind of running out of space in this corner. But the coordinates for this bubblegum pink are going to be what? Well, the coordinates are going to be 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Again, we're looking at cotangent squared of 60. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So let's rewrite. Here we can just, let's just erase our comma and make it, we're just dividing here. Half divided by root 3 over 2. Well, this is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So this is the same thing as half times 2 over root 3. And our 2's will cancel, and you're left with 1 over root 3. So, so let's clear up some space. Well, clearing up some space would actually erase my, <laughs> erase my covering, so let's just let's go over here. So, so far we have cotangent of 60, cotangent of 60 equals 1 over root 3, but we want to square it, right? Uh, so whenever we square it, we're left with 1 third. Cotangent squared of 60 is 1 third. And then we want to multiply it by this 9 coefficient. So 9 cotangent squared of 60 is going to be 9 over 3, which is going to equal 3. So, so far in the numerator, we have 3 plus 2 minus 4 which is going to be 1, and then in the denominator we still need to figure out this 3 tangent squared of 30. Alright. We train, change over to this nice orchid color, so 30 degrees is around this point, and the coordinates for 30 degrees are, are the exact opposite as for 60, it's, it's going to be root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And so whenever we, so tangent is sine over cosine, so again we have 1 half over 30, or I'm sorry, we have 1 half over root 3 over 2, and so this is the same as what we just solved for for the cotangent of 60. Okay, so tangent of 30 is also going to be 1 over root 3 also equals tangent of 30 degrees. Let's make a little dividing line. And again, whenever we square it, so let me, uh, let me erase what we just did with our cotangent of 60. Alright, so we just said tangent of 30 is going to be 1 over root 3. And so then we square it, and we get tangent squared of 30 equals 1 over 3, 1 third. And then we need to multiply it by this 3 coefficient. 3 here, 3 here, and this equals 1. So all in all, we have 1 plus 2 minus 1 in the denominator. 1 plus 2 is 3, minus 1 is 2. And then in the numerator, we have 3 plus 2, which is 5, minus 4, which is 1. So this whole thing, I believe, will equal to 1 half. All right, let's, let's clear our board. Let me type our answer in. We said 1 half is our answer. Correct! Awesome! Awesome work, guys. This was... There was a lot to do in this problem, but we did it. We defined cotangent and secant. We used our unit circle to figure out the values. I love problems like this. This was a great problem. 
All right, let's look at this next problem. What do we do? Find the value of the above fraction tower if x is between 0 and 90. Okay, and they're, they're restricting the domain here uh, because some of these trigonomic functions have some interesting graphs. I, I challenge you to, at home, look at the graph of like cosecant and cotangent and the, really these three, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, uh, these are peculiar graphs and th that's part of the reason why the domain needs to be restricted between 0 and 90. Uh, however, let's, let's, let's look at this problem at hand. We have sine over cosine. Well, sine over cosine is just tangent. And then below this we have over tangent. Well, this is just 1. And then, so right now we're at 1. And then we have 1 over cotangent. Well, 1 over cotangent, well, cotangent is 1 over tangent, right? And so 1 over cotangent, well, this just equals tangent. Okay, and then next we have secant. So, so far we have tangent over secant. And again, secant is what? It is 1 over cosine. So if I, uh, let me change colors. If I write this out in terms of sine and cosine, and, and sometimes that's easier so you don't get confused, we have sine over cosine divided by 1 over cosine. And if you work this out, what do we get? Let's erase this. Well, we have sine over cosine times cosine over 1. So our cosines cancel, and we're just left with a sine. So after we divide by our secant, we're left with sine. And now, lastly, we need to divide by our cosecant. So what is sine divided by cosecant, which is just 1 over sine. Well, dividing by 1 over sine is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And so this is the same thing as multiplying by sine over 1. And sine times sine over 1 is going to be sine squared. So sine squared must be our answer. Awesome. This. <laughs> this is another one of those problems where it is pretty easy to get messed up and confused, but but if you just take it step by step, know your identities, then you, you can work out this problem pretty simply. All right, good, good work, guys. Let's go to the next problem. Cosine of 45 times cosine 46 times cosine 47, etc., etc., all the way to cosine of 135. What does that equal? Okay, well, let's, let's look at our unit circle and think about this for a moment. So we have our unit circle. Have our unit circle. We just drew it out. Again, cosine is what, what part of our unit circle? It's our x values, as our unit circle is always written in cosine, comma, sine. So our cosine, our our x values of our unit circle. Here, we're told that we're starting at 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. And we're multiplying every degree worth until we get to 135. So 135 would be around this value. Here. So this whole thing is 135 degrees. And so what are we seeing here? Well, we're doing, well, whenever we get to this apex point, cosine of 90, well, our x value here is 0. And so this whole thing must be 
zero. It's, it's that simple. We just, just understanding what the problem is asking us, seeing that it passes through cosine of 90, and knowing that cosine of 90 is zero, and anything times zero is zero. Uh, that's how we solve this problem. Excellent, let's go to the next problem. Inverse sine of sine equals theta. Inverse sine of sine of theta equals theta if the domain of sine of theta is all real numbers. Okay, this, this problem is a little bit tricky. Let's think about our sine wave. What does our sine wave look like? We have our graph, and then our sine of sine of zero is zero. It starts here, and then whenever we get to pi over two, pi over two, it's going to be at one. then pi is back at zero and then it's going to even go further down so our sine graph looks looks like this and it's repeating and it's periodic and this is what our sine graph looks like it's between this it looks like this and what's unique about this well, actually, well, what are we really thinking about? This is our graph of our, this is our function sine of x. This is our sine of x function. Well, our inverse sine would be different. Its domain would be restricted between, I think it's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So so theta can't be whatever we want it to be. It, it's, it would be restricted. So this has to be false. And um, I, don't, I don't feel like I gave you all a satisfying explanation for this problem. So let's, let's go to the, let's discuss solutions and see what's said. All right, so I think this is what we're talking about. Note that the range of the inverse sine function is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and the range of f of x is all the real numbers. With this in mind we pick theta, the absolute value of theta greater than pi over 2. Uh, if we do this we can see our equation is false. Um, I hope that this is a satisfying explanation. If it's still not I challenge you to just go to Wolfram Alpha or go to your graphing calculator and plot the graph for this inverse sine function and you'll understand why uh, the domain is not all real numbers the domain is restricted between pi over between the absolute value of pi over 2 between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 uh, so so look at that graph and and think about it think about the implications all right let's go to, let's go on to this last problem Sine of 30 degrees is, is what? Oh, all right, well, oh, this problem's making me laugh, especially after th the first problem we did where it was so crazy intense. All right, well, this, sine of 30 is just one half, right? And we look at our unit circle and, and we know this to be true. Um, let, let, let's submit this question. If you followed me on problem one, you can you definitely know that this answer is one half. Uh, we're just looking at our unit circle, right? We have our unit circle, and we're looking at the value of sine of thirty degrees, which is right here, and we know that this value is root three over two comma one half. So sine of thirty must be a half. <laughs> All right, ec excellent work, guys. Until next time, if you have not already, please 
subscribe to my channel. Please comment down below what was useful and what wasn't. I want these explanations to be thorough enough for you to understand what is happening and fast paced enough to where you don't get bored watching. So, so let me know down below what I can do to improve. I really do appreciate it. Again, until next time, take care, everybody.